All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond Deza. It's a double court day for the former American president, Donald Trump. The hush money trial is now in its third day in New York, while the U.S. Supreme Court is hearing arguments in Washington over his immunity bid in the federal election case. The hearing will determine if Donald Trump should be immune from prosecution for any action that he had taken during his time as the president of the United States of America. Now, Trump's immunity appeal is regarding the case of the election subversion, one of the four criminal cases that the Republican presidential candidate faces. The federal case brought up by the special counsel Jack Smith back in December, and this, of course, accuses Donald Trump of conspiring to block the peaceful transfer of power after he lost the 2020 election to Joe Biden. In this case, Donald Trump faces three counts of felony to derail the transfer of power. This in part by affecting the voting rights of millions of people and pressurizing the government officials to override the election results based on his claims of electoral fraud. The special counsel has argued that these efforts culminated in the events of the 6th of January 2021 when the Trump supporters had stormed the American Capitol. During the proceedings, the Supreme Court appeared to be searching for some kind of middle ground in response to the former President Donald Trump's claims of sweeping immunity for his actions. It seems that the court is unwilling to grant him broad protections that he has sought, but at the same time is also unwilling to give the special counsel Jack Smith carte blanche to pursue his election subversion charges. The trial's start date was set in March. However, Trump's lawyers have filed a series of motions seeking to postpone the case against him. They've argued that the accusations against Donald Trump fall within the range of presidential actions that courts have often ruled are legally protected, at least from civil lawsuits. Now, the question of whether an ex-president of the United States of America is immune from prosecution is legally untested in the American courts. And this is the first time that the former White House occupant has been charged with a crime of this nature. The hearing is crucial as it will not only quash the charges against Trump but also will alter the US presidency if the theory of presidential immunity is adopted. It will provide some extraordinary consolidation of power to the Oval Office. Trump is of course hoping for a friendly hearing from a court that he had, be, he had a critical role in shaping. Now, there is a bench of six conservatives and three liberal judges while three of the judges are appointed by him. Trump is forced to be present at the Manhattan court for the hush money trial and watch his alleged tabloid co-conspirator David Pecker's testimony about the bid to kill the controversial stories that could have derailed his 2016 White House campaign. Well, we have a big case today. This uh, judge isn't allowing me to go. Uh, we have a big case today in the Supreme Court on presidential immunity. A president has to have immunity. If, it, if you don't have immunity, you just have a ceremonial president. So the hearing of this case is happening at the U.S. Supreme Court as we speak. Arguments are currently underway for the issue of presidential immunity. Let's in fact listen in to what are the arguments that are being put forth. Blanket immunity allow each allegation to be brought and then we would decide in that context. Yes, with, with the additional note that petitioner has never made that argument and I think it would be up to a district court to decide whether to go that route at this point in the litigation. He's put all of his eggs in the absolute immunity basket. All right, and if we if we invite, uh, you know, if we see the question presented as broader than that and we do say let's engage in the core uh, official versus not core and try to figure out the line, um, is this the right vehicle to hammer out that test? I mean, I, I'd understood um, that the most, if not all, but most of the allegations here, there's really no plausible argument that they would fall into core versus not such that they are immune. We don't think there are any core 
acts that have been alleged in the indictments that would be off limits as a matter of Article 2. So if we were going to do this kind of analysis, try to figure out what the line is, we should probably wait for a vehicle that actually presents it in a way that allows us to test the different sides of the, uh, the standard that we'd be creating, right? I don't see any need in this case for the court to embark on that analysis. All right. The final sort of uh, set of questions that I have have to do with what I do take as a very legitimate concern about uh, prosecutorial abuse, about future presidents being um, targeted uh, for things that they have done in office. I, I, I take that concern. I think it's a real thing. All right. So that, of course, are, those are the arguments that are being made in this very crucial case of presidential immunity that is currently being heard at the American Supreme Court. And to give us more insights into this, we're being joined in by my colleague Susan Tehrani, who's joining us live from New York. Susan, tell us a bit more about this case and as to why this is such a crucial case in the lead up to the presidential elections later this year in November. Yeah, this really is that main case that will even affect Trump's other cases moving forward. The issue of presidential immunity brought forward by Jack Smith is something that is unprecedented, first of all. So it's very important in that sense. And second of all, when we're looking at the Supreme Court, we really do see the judges the justices reluctance uh, to get involved in this political game, if you may, uh, that's going on right now uh, between Donald Trump and the Justice Department, notably Jack Smith. And ultimately, as you mentioned, if we get a medium range ruling, uh, then lower courts will have to proceed and that will take months even after uh, the November elections. And if Donald Trump is elected by then, then this is just going to be thrown out. But it's also significant because when we're talking about immunity, it's not going to only affect future presidents besides Donald Trump. But then these discussions will come forth about previous presidents and the actions that they made that were controversial and perhaps a quote unquote mistake. Uh, for example, drone strikes by the Obama administration, uh, faulty strikes uh, on the part of the uh, Biden administration during the Afghanistan withdrawal. These are just some examples that will come to light. Absolutely. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Susan Tehrani, for joining us and getting us all those details. We'll, of course, come back to you as more details emerge in the story. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.